So if you're trying to make a choice about which collar is right for you, the halo or the spot on, there are five questions that this person asked, and I'm going to add two more uh, really important points in this video. So questions that this person asked, and I'm going to add two more uh, really important points in this video. So stick around because I think the information you're going to find is very helpful in making a choice about the collars. And you can tell that this person has watched my videos. They have paid attention. They are asking just really good educated questions that are super concise. First thing I want to note though, is she notes in her email, these videos have been very helpful. So thank you. You know what? If you want to thank me, the best thing to do is just to use my video links. Um, I'm an affiliate now for both collars. That's how I support my channel and the energy and time uh, in making these videos. I will say I'm not going to give you one decision over another. I'm just going to kind of lay out the facts for you and let you choose kind of what is right for you. So listen on. These questions are super well thought out. Thank you. Okay, the first question is, can the spot on collar be used for training? That is a great question. As a matter of fact, spot on did not design it to be used for training. It is not meant to have a remote callback. If you are trying to decide between the spot on or the halo and that training feature of callback, I'm going to share it like this. Spot on is designed to be way more like an invisible fence than an actual training collar or e-remote and that has been by design. That's also why you will see Halo spending a ton of effort in trying to create training videos for people who are trying to get their dogs kind of on board with their device. Both of them have the portability so you can think of it very much like that but spot on is much more like an invisible fence with that flexibility than halo um halo is actually more feature rich in some ways but also lacks in some ways the next question is about subscription service and this person asks can a spot on be used without a subscription yes it absolutely can and this is again where it works a lot like an invisible fence so you'll be able to program it. You'll be able to walk your fence. You won't necessarily have the cellular features that it offers. For example, identifying exactly where your dog is right at the moment because you need to be sort of connected in a different way. Also, you're going to also lack support. So think about if that's important to you or not. I actually, when I set up the spot on, I did not have a sur subscription to start. I had no problems. It was very straightforward. It's something you can always add after. The next question is actually about uh, foliage. And of course, as you are with any GPS fence, when you have coverage over an area, so let's say you live in a forest area, you are going to be impacted by the coverage of the collar itself. Now spot on does actually work better in areas like that. And I think it's because of the amount of pins that it actually places in when it's creating a map. It also operates in what is called forest mode, which basically says, hey, you're in a forest. So it just, it, I think it operates a little bit differently in its operating system. That's really all I can kind of describe to it. But it identifies that it actually does have coverage. You'll also note that in both collars, and this is not necessarily formal or official in the halo collar, but it is in the spot on. They will say if you come into a home, something with cover, particularly if you're in forest mode, you want to actually take the color off. Or what happens is the, uh, the signal basically gets dispersed, the system gets confused and can go off on the dog. What's interesting is, is I just recently read in a support group, that's actually what they're recommending in Halo are a couple of different things where you can either just turn the collar off uh, just by toggling it on your phone uh, so feedback is off or again, taking it off. So um, I am finding that the spot on was a little bit more accurate uh, in this high force mode, which as you saw in many of my videos, that's actually where we test it, our uh, spaces with lots of land and of course, lots of tree coverage. The next question I'm getting is actually about the reviews. And reviews are really interesting because you have to take them with a grain of salt. Many of those reviews are specifically about Halo, a lot of frustrated customers. I want you to remember we're talking about a new company 
that's up and coming. They're trying to figure out how to grow. And so, yeah, they were really impacted with the first version of their collar. They were impacted with probably the size of their team, I'm willing to bet, and just trying to kind of navigate all of that. I feel like both companies have done really an amazing job kind of really trying to right source their support now. You'll notice, you know, you call Halo, they're, you're literally on a Zoom call with them. They have a bit of an unconventional way of doing support. They have these dog parks where you can go in and ask questions. Now, Spot On is a little bit more traditional in their support approach where it's actually, you know, online. I can text them, I can call them. Both companies have been very good about getting back to me about anything. I just, I take anything like that that is online that is these, um, these really intense reviews, again, with a grain of salt. I feel like a lot of people, quite frankly, lack patience and the ability to troubleshoot. And so that they get frustrated. And I'll give you a great example. I got frustrated one day when I was trying to reset my collar and map it. Well, instead of bringing it into the house where it couldn't, it couldn't reconfigure itself, I just left it in the yard for a half hour. Something as simple as that, believe it or not, can resolve a lot of issues. But if you don't really take the time to understand and know those nuances, you would get really frustrated. But we did a lot of troubleshooting. So that is my comfort zone, is trying to figure out why something isn't working and resolving it. And again, that support issue, I think, has really been, uh, you know, right and centered face to best really fit the needs of not just the client, but quite frankly, dogs that, that have this collar. Fifth question that this person has, and I'm gonna add two more bonus things on here as well, is about um, actually walking the fence. In both collars, doesn't matter if it's halo or spot on, you can walk your collar fence line with the device actually in your hand. The one main difference with spot on, you touch a button, you walk your boundary, it tra tracks you. With Halo, as you walk each boundary point, you touch a button, you walk, you pin it. You walk, you pin it. You walk, you pin it until you close that loop. So both of them you can actually do that with. Now, in the Halo, you can actually do this by actually drawing on your on your iPhone or your, you know, whatever device you have. Um, and then sort of kind of tweak it and adjust it as you need to. With Spot On, they are just starting to release this. And as a matter of fact, I got the beta version for this and I'm gonna be testing this out, um, not this weekend, but hopefully next week. Now I promised two bonus things, and this is something that I have not mentioned in my videos or necessarily highlighted, I should say, in my videos. One major difference I will say with Spot On is that it has a lot more ability to adjust the feedback setting for your dog. So, um, for example, my first dog, her name was Ellie. She was incredibly stubborn. Um, she was a poodle, doodle mix. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was Ellie's way or the highway. She was a very hard dog to train, a very hard one to get to respond, etc. Um, she needed a higher feedback setting than probably what Halo uh, gives me with Vivi. Vivi is like, I have the collar on, I'm good. Send me a sound, I'm good. So something to think about is the temperament of your dog, how well they respond to feedback. A lot of dogs will respond to sound and vibration, and that's really what where we want them to be. The most important thing is training your dog to come back and knowing that you are the safe zone and the safe space to come back to. But certainly, if you want more of that flexibility, uh, Spot On actually uh, does have a lot more room for increasing uh, that feedback setting. The last thing I wanted to share was really about battery life. And I just wanted to clarify, so this battery right now, you have a device on your dog that's working like a cell phone. It's basically has brains in there, it's connecting to GPS, etc. Keep in mind that 20 hours Either collar for battery life, I think is incredible. I can't tell anybody that my cell phone can last 20 hours without being charged in that time. So manage your expectations as far as battery life, but I think that that is uh, really great. I also wanted to share, you know, also remember there are multiple things that are going on in this device that can impact it. And I'm not actually sure with spot on how much they're being impacted through external sources. So for example, Microsoft just sent an update to something and somehow or another that impacted the software 
with Halo in some way or another with feedback on fences. I'm not really exactly sure what it was, but there's a lot of technology that's going into these collars that can impact it for a user. And it's more than just a device. I want you to remember that this is not static, meaning it's, it's not like I can put it on a table and it just works. There are all sorts of things, all sorts of updates that are happening that can definitely change how that collar is working. Again, I'm going to reiterate both teams uh, that I've worked with have been incredible in trying to resolve anything that they have. But just remember that there are a ton of variables. There's not just the technology variables, there's a dog variable, there's external dog variable, and then lastly, of course, the people variable. If you are looking at this collar, just make sure you know, you've know you got the best situation that you can set for yourself. I've just been super impressed with these collars. Anyways, I hope that you found this video helpful. These are really kind of important nuanced tips um, for somebody who's trying to make a choice. Again, if you could use my affiliate links, that would be great. And feel free to email me more questions. This is a great way to answer it. All right, peace out.